tonight on the lost gold of World War II. Somebody call for a bomb guy? Well, you're going to go into our cave with two sticks, a straight bladed knife, and a pair of big balls. All my ears are treasure hunting. I've never seen X marks the spot. I don't like it. Maybe the cave on our mountain was Yamashita's headquarters. There's something wrong here. Yamashita didn't make anything easy for anybody. They ransack the place, and they get the golden Buddha. Whoa, nobody. Hold, hold, hold. Give me that. For 70 years, legends have been told of a buried treasure shrouded in danger. It's one of the great mysteries of World War II. Something very secretive and strange has got to be buried in that mountain. In a covert operation, infamous Japanese General Yamashita allegedly buried thousands of crates throughout the Philippines near the end of the war. They were just taking anything of value, gold, silver, weapons, even military secrets. Yamashita's treasure could be anything. Now, with the help of a key eyewitness. Many, many Japanese were here. A team of Americans is on the hunt for this lost chapter in World War II history. Here's something right here in this area. The question we have right now is, what is the best way to get inside this mountain? You will there. You will die. So I'll isolate that clump. In the northern Philippines, John Casey and Manny Paez are inside a cave, searching for what they hope is Yamashita's treasure. After running into problems at their first dig site, Breach 6, how the hell would silk get in here? They turned to advanced technology to find another way into the mountain. This right here could be a cave entrance. Inside the cave, they've discovered a group of coded symbols. Markers on these rocks. And after triangulating them together, the team found a rock marked with a distinct X. There's a chisel mark in this thing of an X. Which John believes could be concealing a small treasure, a larger chamber, or possibly even the entrance to a network of tunnels. It's a marker telling us, get the shovel. We're going to dig right now. Before breaking ground, John gives the area one last sweep with his metal detector. That sounded good. We got a pretty decent sized target. When I cross over the center, I'm getting a really decent hit. And it could be just like a barrel of diamonds right here. It could be a barrel of anything, you know, a barrel of coins. Hey, this rock could be marking an entrance to a tunnel for all I know. Hey, Manny. Yeah. I'm super suspicious that it's too easy. You know, that that mark is just way out, right in the blatant open. That marker over there is just alone by itself. Why? You know, then why is it lying up to that one almost in a perfect triangle? Something very suspicious about it. Maybe. You know, they're trying to trick you. The giveaway marker, the triangulation, and the X marker line up way too easy. There's something about it's a little fishy. It's making me a little nervous, hesitant to go forward. I don't like it. Yamashita didn't make anything easy for anybody. Known as a brilliant strategist, General Yamashita masterminded the fall of Singapore with a surprise overland attack, rather than the amphibious invasion expected by the Allies. Following the surrender of 80,000 Allied troops and the loss of their stronghold in Asia, Winston Churchill declared it the worst disaster in British military history. As a result of this bold military success, Emperor Hirohito and a secret society of Japanese royalty called the Golden Lily allegedly entrusted Yamashita to safeguard their stolen loot at the end of World War II. My gut is telling me it's there's something wrong here. Just digging on it could be disastrous. So don't put a shovel in the ground just yet. We just got to be smarter than them and figure it out safely. All right. All my ears are treasure hunting. I've never seen X marks the spot. We have to look around a little further because there's just something not right. I'm getting a bad feeling. 
Hopefully there's nobody, critters or snakes or whatever hanging out. There's nothing in here. Okay. I'm gonna go around the back. Oh. Well, that ain't good. Oh, no. That's a flower. In the Yamashita codes, that means bomb. That's no good. That's totally bad. I'm not going to take any chances in triggering that bomb. It was the first time I ever saw an X on top of a rock. I've never seen a treasure that has X marks to spot. Very seldom you ever see X marks to spot. It's like bleating and right in the open. Yeah, and what they're trying to do also it could be to keep you from finding the real treasure. They don't want you to find it. It looks like it might be a classic giveaway marker. Giveaway markers, according to the team's research, are one of the countless symbols believed to be left behind by the golden lily. These markers can lead treasure seekers to a small treasure site, but sometimes they are used to lure treasure hunters into deadly booby traps. So based on the X mark on that rock, I started to get a bad feeling as I'm walking around. Something ain't right. So I started looking around, see what else I can find, and lo and behold, I come across this. What does that look like to you, Mark? That's definitely a bomb marker. It is a flower. Exactly. This. This here scares me. It scares me, too. So far, Grandpa has told us about some people dying in Breach 6. We found evidence of a possible cyanide bottle. Well, what could that be? Could it be a cyanide bottle? Cyanide bottle? Found evidence of the water trap in Breach 6. How the hell would silt get in here? It was possibly deposited by water at one point. And now this flower. I think we underestimated how well Yamashita protected his treasure. I agree. It seems like every marker or symbol we follow seems to lead to danger. What do we really know about Yamashita? What was he really doing here? We know that he was handpicked by the Golden Lily to protect these treasure sites. And he surrendered not too far from here, right around the corner. In the final months of World War II, following General MacArthur's triumphant return to the Philippines, American forces advanced north cornering Yamashita and his troops in the mountains of northern Luzon, forcing his surrender. If Yamashita surrendered just right around the corner, maybe we should go to where he was and get a better insight as what his plans were. We may learn something new. Let's start looking at this mountain as Yamashita looked at it, not as treasure hunters, but as soldiers. That's a good idea. This is the place, Pete. The place Yamashita came out of the mountains. 30 miles north of the mountain, Peter and John visit the surrender site of General Yamashita in the remote village of Kayangan. Look at this view. Holy crap. This is where Yamashita made his last stand in these surrounding mountains. So where's our mountain from here? Well, we're 30 miles in that direction right there. Maybe just over that largest hump. I think that he chose this spot because it drew the Americans and the Allies away from where the treasure sites were. I agree. It all ended right here. So the people from the surrounding villages wanted to hang him, so they kept him here. Well. Surrender of General Yamashita. On this site, General Yamashita, together with his staff, surrendered to the elements of the U.S. 6th Army in the morning of September 2nd, 1945. On August 15th, Hirohito, the Emperor of Japan, formally surrenders. It takes 18 days for Yamashita to come out of the mountains and give himself up. Why? It makes no sense. He was hiding something. Whoa, look at this place. A lot of stuff in here. Oh, here's this instrument of surrender. The formal instrument of surrender of the Japanese Imperial government and the Japanese Imperial General Headquarters. He signed right there. 
there. Look at this here picture. General Yamashita's cave headquarters in Baggio. He had his headquarters in a cave. It's believed General Yamashita used caverns as his personal command centers, providing him a secure network of natural bunkers as he moved around the Philippines. A similar strategy was employed by Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden following the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Despite being the most wanted man in the world, he managed to avoid capture, in part by moving from cave to cave in the mountains of Afghanistan. Maybe the cave on our mountain was one of the Yamashita's headquarters. It was a perfect place to have a, a, a headquarters, a position to control the whole mountain. Based on the photo, John speculates that their cave could possibly have served as a secondary headquarters to Yamashita and his men. I want to know if this cave is just a treasure bunker or if it's the key to getting inside this mountain. That ain't good. Oh, no. That's a flower. While exploring a remote cave at the top of the mountain, John Casey was stopped by the discovery of a flower carved into a rock, which, according to the Golden Lily Code, could mean a bomb. In order to investigate the cave safely, the team has invited an explosive ordnance and military expert to the mountain. Somebody call for a bomb guy? Chad Higginbotham. Pete Struzieri. Good to meet you. John Casey. Good to meet you, John. Let's get you situated first. Come on inside. All right. So, Chad, what's your background? I started out in the military January 1st of 1990. Uh, I did two tours in Somalia, two in Iraq, two in Afghanistan, and another two in other operations that I can't talk about. Well, we brought you in today, so we could get some information from you uh, about a cave that we located up in the mountain. Looking around on the outside of the cave, I came across this marker here. According to the Japanese codes, that's a bomb marker. That means it's a booby trap. The thing about Japanese booby traps is the only limitation to a booby trap is the limitation of your imagination. What experience have you had with handling explosive ordnance? In Afghanistan and Iraq, most of what we found were in caves, and they were stockpiled. And we went in and removed them. So you're the guy that's got the experience then? Yes. All right. Let me get up there and look around and see what I can find. Do you wear protective clothing over you when you do this, or just? When I'm dealing with explosives? Yeah, what are you going to wear when you go in the cave? Anything? Just what I'm wearing. That bomb suit is only so they can pour you in a casket if it goes off. That don't sound too good at all. Right. So you're going to go into our cave with two sticks? A straight-bladed knife and a pair of big balls. OK. <laughs> Fair enough. John and Manny lead Chad to the top of the mountain so they can get his expert opinion about what they're possibly dealing with inside the cave. I've been dying to get back into this cave and keep exploring. But it's been too dangerous. So now that Chad's here, we can get back in there and safely explore what may have been one of Yamashita's headquarters. Heading to the good stuff now. That's where you go. All right. This is beautiful up here. The views are phenomenal. We're almost there. So how far are we from the cave now? Oh, Where's it We're at? here. I mean, a little dark spot under there, that's where our cave starts dropping in. Oh, right OK. There. Tell you what, a lot of this is very, very defendable. This is definitely man-made. It's definitely dug out. This is not natural. I mean, this would be your checkpoint for anybody coming in. Outside the cave's entrance, Chad's military-trained eyes see the area for what it could be, a defensible position. Like right here, it's, it's dug out right here. You can see it's lower. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty good size to be one single foxhole. You're not getting past this point if you're not saying the right words. So this was a hell of a defendable spot. Yet they didn't fight here. The Japanese were over there. Fighting. In Dalton Pass. Yeah. 85 miles south of the mountain at Dalton Pass, from January to August 1945, this narrow passage provided the backdrop of the pivotal Battle of Luzon, where thousands of Allied troops 
faced fierce resistance from the Japanese Imperial Army. Both sides suffered heavy casualties, and though it was an eventual win for the Allies, some believe the Japanese were successful enough in buying the critical time needed for Yamashita's men to finish concealing the Imperial treasure in the Philippines. You've got soldiers here. You've got defendable positions here. You've got things you can see that were built for a battle, but it was never here. So if you don't want somebody to know something's there, you draw them somewhere else. Right. So what do you think they were doing here? Burying treasure. Yeah. If they wanted to hide it, you don't let everybody know it's there. So you draw them that way. It's a big diversion. Exactly. Don't bring them to the front door of the piggy bank. Right. <laughs> well, let's, you want to go look at the cave? I want to see this. Yeah, let's check it out. Grab your gear, well, let's go. With the Japanese, I think the way this is set up, it is very possible that there is something here that they were willing to defend or use other tactics to draw people away from it. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Wow. This is a hell of a spot, man. This cave is out of the way. You know, it could have been a bunker. Let me, let me take a look around for a minute. Y'all just kind of hang out right here. Sure thing. General Yamashita is reported to have placed booby traps within all Golden Lily treasure sites. Using his years of ordnance disposal experience, Chad explores the cave interior for signs of old World War II explosives. I'm seeing a rust deposit that's running through under this rock. I do see that rust. I'm not sure what the hell that is. It could be part of a bomb that was here. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the looks of that. I'm seeing a rust deposit that's running through under this rock. I do see that rust. I'm not sure what the hell that is. It could be part of a bomb that was here. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the looks of that. High up the mountain, before the team can begin digging for the treasure they believe to be buried inside the cave, explosives expert Chad Higginbotham investigates a rust-stained area to make certain it's not an active Japanese booby trap. All right, look, you guys are treasure hunters. You're trusting those markers that are saying the treasure's here, right? Mm -hmm. You've also got to trust the ones that say there's a booby trap here. It could be part of a bomb, but it's degrading. It's no danger to us right now. World War II era Japanese explosives were made from metal. And due to the wet climate of the Philippines, it's likely the large rust stain is the degraded remains of a device. If that's the case, any other potential Japanese booby traps in the cave would likewise be deteriorated. This is built up. Right. The section you're standing on is built up with dirt. This is a, a, a ledge here. This isn't just washed out. Right. I mean, this is a retaining wall. Mm -hmm. With this being built up, they could have wanted to either bury something or get up out of the water. Every yeah. time you start looking around this cave and you start looking close, you start to see something that's man-made. Right. See, like that right there. That is man-made, out of the ordinary. That's not a natural occurrence right there. And then there's, you know, like a plenty of room in here. You can see from the soot on the ceiling over here, they've been cooking up back there. And it seemed like they always made all their fires in one spot. I mean, you could have housed uh, 30, 40 guys in here. Could be a stronghold for the Japanese while they were burying treasure in the area. So where have y'all been so far walking around in here? We scanned this with metal detectors, and we found some spot over here. Days earlier, after triangulating a Golden Lily giveaway marker, John and Manny discovered a rock marked with an X that they think may be covering a deposit of treasure. Right there where you're standing it. Right in now. here? Right. All right, I don't see anything obvious. With Chad's approval, 
John and Manny start digging around the X-marked rock. Meanwhile, back at base camp, Peter and Martin discuss other treasure hunting operations in the Philippines to gain some insight on how best to investigate their mountain. There's a guy, his name was Roger Rojas. He was a treasure hunter, and allegedly, he found a golden Buddha and a lot of gold bars associated with it. But he's the only legitimate treasure hunter in the Philippines that has actually, supposedly, found treasure. Some say by the time General Yamashita and his engineers completed their work, they had constructed and filled an alleged 175 different treasure sites. Based on the clues they've discovered so far, Peter and John believe Grandpa's Mountain is one of the main Golden Lily treasure locations. I'm gonna go see Henry Ross. His dad actually recovered a Yamashita treasure, and I wanna know how he did it. I'd like to know too. I think that's a great idea. Maybe by seeing Henry, I can get some more insight as what to do on my mountain. How did Roger Rojas actually find a piece of Yamashita's treasure and live to tell about it? Peter travels 80 miles west to Baguio to meet with Roger Rojas' son, Henry. Oh. Hi. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, oh my name is Peter oh. Scruzieri. I'm Henry Rojas. Henry, nice to meet you. No, nice to meet you, too. Wow, what a view here. <laughs> Have a oh, seat, cool. sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a seat. You're a treasure hunter, all right, just like me. Yes, sir. And your father found some treasure. Yes, sir. Why don't you tell me the story? My dad is only an ordinary man here in the Philippines. We have a stall, a Rojas locksmith. And suddenly, there is a man walking in front of our store. He is sick, and my dad brought that man in the Baguio General Hospital. That man is a Japanese soldier. That Japanese soldier gave a map to my dad to dig the Baguio General Hospital. So he gave him a map of treasure that was inside a hospital to say thank you. Yes. The tunnel is almost uh, 191 feet. Down? Down. Under the floor, under the hospital. Yes, sir. They work almost nine months because plenty of rooms inside. Did he run into any booby traps down there? Uh, no, sir. And he finds treasure? Yes, sir. The Golden Buddha. Solid gold? Yes. Then 17 gold parts. Where does he take it to? Your house? Yes. Sir. How old were you? I'm then? four years old. Four? Yes. You saw the gold? Yeah. Did you see the Buddha? Yes, I, uh, I keep on holding. I thought it's a toy. But uh, the presidential security guard in the Philippines raided our place. They get the Golden Buddha. Then they took it? Yes, sir. Then uh, other uh, gold bars. After they raid our place, because uh, plenty uh, press already saying they get the Buddha of Mr. Rojas, they return the Buddha. But it's fake already, sir. Oh, you they brought remove. a fake Buddha back yes. to your house. The original Buddha, you can remove the head and a plenty of diamond inside. Inside was diamonds? Yes, inside. Two cup of big diamonds. I have pictures. Oh, can I see those? Yes. The picture of my dad, sir. Oh, there's the Buddha. Yes. And here's the head right here. This one, sir, is uh, the fake Buddha. Did they say it was Yamashita's treasure? Yes. In the newspapers, too? Yes. OK. That's my dad. I, I, see, that's good, because it shows me that Yamashita really hid treasure in these mountains, and that's what I'm looking for. Yes. OK. When your dad found the treasure, did he find anything else in that tunnel? Yes, sir. It's here. here Can you like show, yeah, show me? In front of you is my personal collection of the Rahas, sir. Has anyone else seen what's in this box that you're going to show me? and you own this, sir. Oh, I'm on it. Yes, sir. No, I can't wait to look what's in there now. <sighs> oh, my goodness. A 
Has anyone else seen what's in this box to My give him show me? And you own this, sir. Oh, I'm on it. Yes, sir. No, I can't wait to look what's in there now. Team leader Peter Struzieri is in the city of Baguio, talking with Henry Rojas, who just confirmed that his father, Roger, discovered one of the 175 assumed wow. Golden Lily treasure sites. Oh, my goodness. Ah. Oh. Ah. This is a treasure in itself. That's my dad's collection. Sir. This coin is from my father. So all of these coins were, were found in that tunnel? Yes. 1908? Yes. It's a, it's a silver peso. We have also um, you know, 14th century coins. Wait a minute. This was in the tunnel, too? Yes, sir. When I was a kid, I used to dream about holding Yamashita's treasure. <laughs> and here I am. I'm actually touching a Yamashita treasure. Well, I have also a Japanese sword. I'll show you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And you, you, your father found this in the tunnel yes. with the Buddha and the gold. Yes, sir. You, you can see the picture. Oh, this one, sir. Oh. This is the picture. Oh, look at this. This is a treasure in itself. Thank you so much for letting me even hold this. <laughs> what a privilege. You honor me by letting me hold this. Thank yes, you, sir. sir. You're welcome, sir. OK. Henry's story is really amazing. But the thing that sticks with me is that a Japanese soldier actually came back here with a treasure map, which eventually his father got a hold of that map and found the piece of Yamashita's treasure. I can't wait to get back to my mountain and continue my dig. Yes, sir. Good luck, Ken. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Any help, sir, just tell me. I will. Thank you. Goodbye, sir. I'm going to go back and talk to Grandpa and see if he knows about any Japanese soldiers that came here after the war. Meanwhile, high up the mountain inside the cave with the rock marked with an X, John and Manny continue excavating around the large stone in hopes of uncovering a piece of the golden lily treasure. How certain are you guys that there is actually something down here? Well, the metal detector's giving us a hit. I got a void here. Oh, hold on. Yeah. A little space, like in between rocks or as well as all this other is packed. I don't know why that wouldn't be packed like that. That's kind of strange. It is. It looks like it goes in for ours. It's just like a space where... Yes, yeah, yes. it turns in right here. Oh, it goes in there pretty good, huh? Yeah. The giveaway marker, the X on the rock, the void space behind it, that rock's got to go. Let's get it. OK, let's do it. If we can move this rock safely, it may reveal an opening that would lead to something big. With a promising void space blocked by the large rock marked with an X, John and Manny excavate around the boulder to get a better look. They want me to dig right up against it. There is something rusty back there. It's kind of strange. It is. OK. Something metallic? This is rusty. Here. It is curved. It is hard. And it is buried. That very well could have been a grenade at one point. What? A canister of a, a grenade or something. Yeah, this whole thing's degraded, busted out. What do you think, John? It's not a grenade anymore. It absolutely was a grenade. See the rim on it? Upon seeing the rusted rim, Chad is convinced what they are unearthing in the cave are the remains of a deteriorated grenade. Now, it would have had a wooden handle about that long on it, and then a grenade on the top. It looks like a soda can. It, it would have been what the Nazis would have called a potato mash. Wow. The German Model 24 Stalk Hand Grenade, or Potato Masher, is a fragmentation grenade used during World War I and World War II by German forces. Heralded for its ease of use and optimal design, the Japanese made their own version of this grenade, called the Type 98. I believe that's what this is. If that's degraded that bad, the wood's just rotted away. And they were easy to Japanese soldiers? Oh, yeah, World Japanese War. soldiers would have used them, too. The potential grenade pieces Chad found are degraded to the point there is no danger. But the rusted bits of metal could be evidence that someone placed a booby trap here long ago. Imagine 70 years ago. 
This would be deadly. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that would take you out. It all comes up as fragmentation with the pieces of that metal when they break off, and that's what goes into you. Well, somebody put that there for a reason. Yeah. All right. If we can find the edges of this rock, that would be great. Meanwhile, Peter decides to revisit Grandpa, an eyewitness to Yamashita's clandestine activities in the Philippines during World War II. Grandpa is a great resource. He's been here. He's been on this mountain. Grandpa. Take your drink. How are you? How are you? Nice to see getting, you again. Getting, getting old. You're getting old? Oh, yes. Sir. Oh. Me too. And maybe you can help me. Maybe you can answer some of the questions for me, OK? Yes. Do you remember any Japanese soldiers coming back here after the war? Here, in Jember. He's in general. The general? When? When did you meet him? I was after the war. After the war, you met yeah. him? Wow. Did he, did he go treasure hunting on the mountain? Yes. Did he have any maps with him? Here, here in Quezon. He did not show me the map. Did he ask you to come to the mountain and help him dig? No. Then, then what happened? La, unluckily, he died inside the mountain, the bomb. A bomb? Yes. He died by a booby trap? Yes. I got guys on the mountain right now, and I'm worried about their safety. I don't mean to press you. I got a lot of responsibility on this trip. I have to protect my people. It's hard. Oh, crap. What's that? What's that? Whoa, nobody. Hold, hold, hold. Give me that. What you got, Chad? Back up, back out, back out, back out. hard. Ooh. What is that? Whoa, nobody. Hold, hold, hold. Give me that. What you got, Chad? It's the detonator. It's the top of a potato masher grenade. You were digging right here? Right there. That's where I just flipped it up out of. I've got to get this one out and take a better look at it. I'm going to have everybody back up so I can get it into some better light. The suspected detonator appears more intact than the grenade pieces the team previously uncovered. Chad takes it into the light to confirm it's no longer a threat. All right, I'm going to turn this a hair. inert. There you go. Without a firing mechanism, the detonator poses no danger to the team. Let me see if I can find you another one. So they return to their excavation beneath the X-marked rock. Into this one. Looks like it keeps on going, though. <sighs> Hold on, boys. Hold on a second. What do you got? Ooh, it's brown. Oh. Look at that. Our first piece of treasure. <laughs> we found a coin, boys. Look at that. That's definitely a coin. That's not yes, it garbage. You'll have to clean it up? Yeah, we got some water. Oh, can you see it? It's the first piece of treasure we found on this site. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, there's one, there's two, baby. Killer. Let's see it a little closer. Just finding something like that in here, it's a pretty good sign for you. No doubt. Finding this going is great. But what the hell is it doing 5,000 feet up a mountain buried next to a rock with an X on it? Oh, Manny. I'm going to have to share it with Pete. He's going to be yep. stoked. Put it somewhere Ship safe up, now. Man. It's a good sign, Don. It's a beautiful day. Hey, guys. 
guys. <laughs> Smiles on your Hopefully face. You got yeah, a bunch a of stuff in there, Manny. We got a lot. We got a lot. Oh, wow. Oh. We're digging around, and all of a sudden, I see a little round thing. Oh, oh it's an actual coin. coin. Look at that. It's treasure, baby. That thing is killer. You can actually look across it. We took some pictures, tried to blow it up. You can actually see some kind of writing on it, but who knows what. We'll send it off to Bingo to get a better look at it. It certainly proves to me that there's more down there, possibly. Manny, grab the other thing. Oh, look at that. What is that? That is the detonator for a Japanese hand grenade. The timer would have been there, would have been on the top. There would have been a spring system with two different types of detonators in there, which would go off simultaneously setting off the explosive. So could this have been something purposely put there so if you moved the rock, it would explode? What I can say is that was put there to hurt somebody who was messing around that rock. So something like that. Obviously, if it were placed there purposely, they were trying to hide something important. Right? That, that would be my guess. I would not booby trap something that was worthless. Right. That's right. Guys, you really made my day. This is really great. The rock said booby trap, and we find booby traps. The rock says treasure. Now we find a coin there. But for me, I have to know for sure if the cave is safe. You brought me in here for a booby trap problem. That's taken care of. Yes, I believe it's safe. You can continue on with what you're doing. And the X-Rock is much bigger than I anticipated. I'm going to need some extra manpower to help me move it. You know, it's a lot of digging. So I'm going to need your help. Maybe go up there and look at it, formulate a plan. I want to see what else is buried underneath that X-Rock. Home sweet home. Yeah. All right. Now that the cave has been safely cleared of booby traps, John, Manny, and Jeremy return to see if they can move the treasure rock marked with an X and discover what lies beneath. We're finding the coin. We find a grenade. Now I'm convinced there's something else underneath that we need to find. We really want to get this rock out of here. This is that bad boy I was telling you about. Do you see the X mark, Jamie? Big X right here. This part up was the only part that we saw sticking out, so the coin kind of slid out of this little edge here, was on the edge of this little lip. So where was the hand grenade? Just underneath your feet. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, now that you've seen it, how do you see us moving this treasure rock? Well, I was hoping I could come up here and just pick it up, but don't quite seem like it, John. We'll probably have to shovel a little bit more around it, get it freed up. The team resumes digging under the rock marked with an X, hoping to find the giveaway treasure they believe is buried below. The thing's a monster and a half. All right. Here we go. Pick it up under there. In there. Oh, here we go, oh. baby. Watch your feet, Jack. No, I'm good. I'm clear. Try to get this side up, John. There you go. There it is. That's what I'm looking for. Check out this side. Hold up. Good job, bro. Yeah, I knew. I brought Watch the powerhouse up here. He'd manhandle that thing right out of there. And I was right. Jeremy had built like a refrigerator. He grabs onto that rock, and he's heaving on it, and he chucks it off to the side like it's a, you know, nothing. Now we're like, yeah, we're, we're on our way. All right, let me get the metal detector. There you go, right there. Whatever it is, it's right in there, man. I slide that stuff up the hill. Seeing anything? No, not, not yet. Put it right there. It's a 
coin. Yeah, look. All right. Our second coin. It's a big coin, too. Not like that other one. It's very strange that there's a singular, though. So maybe if someone was pulling out a treasure and dropped a few out of the box. This cave is amazing. So far, we found possibly a Japanese hand grenade and two coins buried under a rock with an X on it. I'm dying to see what's even deeper. Maybe this is our way inside this mountain. Two down. And where there's two, there's probably three. There should be a lot more. And the rest <laughs> is still there. That's my hope. We got it, Jeremy. <laughs> Sweet. Let's find a third one now. This is cool, John. <laughs> yeah, baby. On the next Lost Gold of World War II. How the hell did this coin end up in the middle of the Philippines? That is the million dollar question. I see bubbles. Oh, what the hell? Is it safe here? You keep digging. There is a tunnel. Oh, might lead us right into the mountain. The story rock is possibly directions to the treasure. Oh, yeah. OK, let's suit up. I don't know what we're going to find in here. We may have a booby trap. Now, I'm going to see you to out. A little more. Come on. Stop. Stop. 